that we will offer our best to you this morning in praise and thanksgiving for being the God that you are. And I pray this day that you will uh, help us to sense your presence among us and that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide and direct us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. I greet you this morning in the name of our risen Savior and Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. And we are so glad that you are here to worship with us, even either here in person or online on Facebook Live. And we would love to know uh, that you are here with us today. Uh, those online, you can comment on Facebook or send us an email, please. Uh, those of you who are here, uh, we have attendance cards in the pews, and we ask that you fill that out. Let us know. Let us know what it has a place where you can circle uh, the time that you are here. Also, on the back side of that, there's the prayer request card, and we appreciate it. Any any prayer requests uh, that you may have, or any praises, if you had a prayer answered, or you know of a prayer that was answered, or uh, we would love to hear that as well. Got a few announcements uh, today. Uh, we thought we had enough volunteers to start the closed closet on this Tuesday, um, but we're short a few. Uh, if you're willing, if you feel called to be a part of that, uh, Brenda Hinch will be in the narthex after the service. You can talk to her to, and, and she'll tell you more about it. It's just a, a short commitment on the second or the first and second Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11:30 a.m. Uh, and just ha we need some help to so we can get that important ministry started back. Uh, starting uh, next week, uh, mask will no longer be mandatory uh, here at the church. Uh, but don't let if you want to wear your mask, you can still wear your mask, uh, and, and you hopefully no judgment uh, for those who not wearing masks. But it will no longer be mandatory uh, starting next week. Um, there will be a drive-through goodbye for uh, myself and my family on Sunday or Saturday, excuse me, Saturday, June the 12th, from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, if you'll come in from uh, the South Drive, the one closest to the church, and come around to the carport, we would love to greet you as we prepare to move. Also, I want to remind you about the golf tournament. On Sunday, June the 13th, uh, there's more information about that on the announcement sheet, which you can find on the table in, uh, in the back of the sanctuary in the center aisle or on the table in the narthex as well. There's a lot more announcements on here than I will go over today. Um, also want to let you know that next Sunday, June the 6th, there'll be a new Sunday school class that's starting. Um, Combining the Faith Link and the Gospel of John classes with Ed Cameron and Wayne Shadden. And they will meet uh, over under the trees out by the parking lot across from the small sanctuary uh, during the Sunday school hour. So we want to let you know that that's starting uh, next week. There will be no youth group uh, this evening due to the Memorial Day holiday. So I just encourage you to pick up the announcement sheet. Uh, it also has the prayer list on the back of it. I believe those are all the announcements. Help. At this time, let us prepare ourselves to worship our Lord.
morning. I'd like to add one additional announcement. After 15 months, the choir will resume rehearsing this Wednesday at 6 p.m. here in the choir loft. Um, so if you have not been a part of that and would like to join us this Wednesday, we would love to have you, and we will be uh, worshiping with the choir next Sunday. So looking forward to that. Exactly. <laughs> But now let us all join together in singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. This time we come to our prayer time, and I have a few additions to our uh, prayer list this morning. Uh, first, we want to extend Christian sympathy to the family of Marty Gibson, who was the music director at Fairfield Glade United Methodist Church, and he uh, is a former staff member here. Uh, we want to continue to uh, pray for Nancy McDavid, the daughter of Camp. Kathy and Terry Edwards, who's recovering from surgery. Uh, we have a praise. Uh, Joan Bockhorn got good test results uh, this week. She has no cancer. Also, um, Bishop Jim Gibson had surgery uh, last week, but he's at home recuperating from surgery. We're uh, glad to share that his surgery went well, but we want to pray for his healing. Uh, we also got a report that a Priscilla Slagle, uh, you pronounce that, Horan, uh, is going through some stem cell uh, replacement therapy. So we want to pray for her healing. 
Uh, Rick Rocker is going through radi radiation and will begin uh, chemotherapy soon. He's still experiencing a lot of pain, so we need to pray for his healing and that the uh, pain will lessen. Also got word that uh, Diana Briggs, Terry Ferris' sister, was in the hospital, so we want to pray for her healing as well. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you uh, for your presence with us through your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the calls that you make on our lives, and we ask that you help us through the Holy Spirit to respond to those calls. And Lord, we give you thanks this weekend as we remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in their life especially those that sacrificed their life for our freedom help us to have a safe memorial day and to remember all of those sacrifices Lord we come to you now in intercession for our prayer concerns we ask your healing spirit to be sent upon those who need healing and your spirit of comfort upon those who need comfort, especially those grieving the loss of a loved one. And Lord, we ask that your spirit of strength and guidance be upon those who need guidance and strength. Lord, we pray for those who have felt the effects of natural disaster. We ask you to send your spirit to help guide them as they try to regain control of their life. Lord, be with those that assist them. Lord, we lift up to you our military personnel, especially those serving in areas of danger and war. Be with them and be with their families that wait at home for their return. We lift up to you our first responders, our fire and emergency medical workers. We ask you to keep them in your care as they care for those who have need. And, and we lift up to you our law enforcement personnel. We ask you to keep them safe as they keep us safe. Oh, Lord, we thank you for those saints that have gone before us and have shared your love and your grace with us through their lives, through their words and through their actions, and help us to follow their example. But most especially, help us to follow the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey boys and girls, Mr. Doug here. I'm in my kitchen today and I'm with Sally as always. And today we're going to talk about something really important. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what's happening when they're watching this Sunday. Sunday is Trinity Sunday. So I want to. What? No, it's not the Sunday that you invite your friends named Trinity to church. No, Trinity Sunday is when we talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all together as one, the Trinity. I know, now that's kind of a, 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 a it's really a hard thing to think about. And so that's why we're in the kitchen today, because I want to give you something to make you realize when we talk about it. Now, when we talk about the Trinity, we talk about God. And so what I got here is I got some flour. Do you see that? Don't put your nose in the flour. Flour, see, now that we'll use that to remind us of God, because it's white and it's pure, just like God is, okay? We'll put this down here in this bowl. And next, I have this. Do you know what this is? That's right, it's salt. And we'll use the salt to represent Christ, okay? And so let's put the salt in with the flour. And lastly, no, it's not to drink, it's part of the thing. We'll use water. Water represents the Holy Spirit. So we have our three things, we have God, we have Jesus, we have God, Jesus, and the water for the Holy Spirit. So we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
And so now let's put them together. Now this is where you come into play. Guess what you get to do? Dun, dun, dun. Yes. You, do you think you can whip it? Okay. Well, that's a good job. Are you done? Okay, just throw that down. All right, are you, are you done? Okay, now, we took the three things, the flour, the salt, and the water, which we use to represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we mixed them together, and this is what we got. It's, what do you think it is? What's it smell like? That's right, it's Play-Doh. That's how you make Play-Doh, kids. It's a homemade Play-Doh. Now, let me ask you a question. Is the flour in this Play-Doh? Is the salt in there? Is the water? So all three things are in this one thing. And so when we think about the Trinity, that's the way it is. All three things are together. Which is a really great thing, which tells us, boys and girls, that no matter the situation, no matter the problems in life, God's got us covered. Okay? Because he has us covered with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we are very much covered in life as we go out. So today, always be assured that you don't have just one thing. You have three things that are combined together to bring you comfort and to protect you through life. As always, me and Sally are so glad to see you all here. And we'll be praying for you. And until the next time, we love you. Bye. It is always a privilege to uh, partner with God in uh, bringing the kingdom of God uh, here on the earth. And during this, these moments, we would like for all of us to contemplate what it is that God is calling us to give to the Lord's church. And as a time for those who are watching online to uh, view the slide that tells you ways in which you can give alternatively. And a reminder to all of us, here uh, live that as you leave you can drop your offering in uh, one of the many baskets found along the outside walls of the sanctuary. Um, we uh, pray this morning on a Trinity Sunday that our ministries will always be inspired by the Trinitarian message of the unity of the God who is represented in one yet three distinct uh, beings. So uh, let us pray together. Lord, we uh, thank you and praise you on this Trinity Sunday where we celebrate uh, God being three in one and one in three. And uh, God, even though we don't uh, fully comprehend what this means, we experience uh, your goodness through uh, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit in the many ways in which you are revealing yourself to us. I pray during these moments that you would inspire us and instill in us the ability and the desire to be extravagantly generous in our gifts to you and to your church and to one another. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Sit in the 
throned above for our lives he spilled his blood sent his spirit like a flood children of the living god sing to the living god Sing of his gentle healing hands, how they found the lowliest man. Sing of his gentle healing hands, sing to the living God. Sing of the mercy that he gives, though we sin, he forgives. Sing of the mercy that he gives, sing to the living God. How he loves us with great love, he who sits enthroned above. For our lives he spilled his blood, sent his spirit like a flood. Children of the living God, sing to the living God. Sing for the morning when he comes in the clouds, glorious sun. Sing for the morning when he comes, sing for the living God. How he loves us with great love, he who sits enthroned above. For our lives he spilled his blood, sent his spirit like a flood. Children of the living God, sing to the living God. We invite you this morning to stand if you uh, feel led to do so for the reading of the Old Testament lesson, which comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. And on this Trinity Sunday, we hear these words. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty. And the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, 
and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. These are the words of the Holy Scriptures given to you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you uh, pray with me again? Lord, again on this Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the fact that you are uh, one God revealed in three persons. And even though we cannot fully comprehend what this means or how it operates, we do know that you come to us in many forms and, and you present your message to us by various means. I pray this morning that you come and uh, touch each and every one of us at the point of our greatest need. And above all, I pray, God, that you would help me to get out of the way in order that you can move in and through us. And we pray this prayer and all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. As we have uh, said a few times this morning, uh, today is one of the high holy days in the life of the church, liturgically speaking, uh, known as Trinity Sunday, and that's the reason that we are uh, donning our white stoles and the pyramids on the pulpit and the lectern are, are uh, white, symbolizing the purity of Christ and indicating to all of us one of the high days of, of the liturgical year. Over the years, we have attempted to uh, come up with illustrations of, of how to explain the Trinity, of how God can be only one, and yet there be three representations or means by which God comes to the people of God. And almost without reservation, these illustrations that we use to try to explain something that uh, I myself have a difficult time understanding how it operates, fall well short of, of our expectations of communicating how God can be three distinct beings and yet be encompassed in only one God. I remember we used to attempt to explain this by using the symbolism of water, that it can be uh, found in liquid form or it can come in the form of steam or when it's frozen it is ice and yet when you uh, figured out it, all of these things can be made up of the same substance. They are one, yet three distinct ways of presenting themselves. And then there was the illustration uh, using an egg that uh, we said there is the the outer component of the shell, and then there is the egg white, and then there is the yolk in the middle. There are three components, and yet they make up one entity. But even as we have used that illustration over the years, scientists kind of threw, threw us a curveball on that, and now they have identified in recent years that the egg really has four parts instead of three. It, there's the shell and then the membrane and then the egg white and the yolk, so we have to throw that one out. And even Doug and Sally's illustration this morning during the children's message of how uh, Play-Doh is uh, composed of three different ingredients 
three distinct ingredients mixed together to make one entity. I must confess this morning that this is one of the things that is incomprehensible to the human mind of how God can be one and yet God can represent in three different entities and means. And even though my human mind is not intelligent enough to understand this or comprehend it, I do celebrate today that God over the years has come to me in those three distinct methodologies. God has spoken to me in the form of being God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Every time that I see images that are in artwork or in uh, liturgical calendars of triangles that represent the Trinity or, or other symbols over the Christian years, I feel a certain sense of sacredness when I view those, those representations of the concept of the Holy Trinity. This morning, you and I may not be able to fully comprehend how God can be one entity and yet uh, reveal the Godhead in three different ways. Three in one, one in three. Today we celebrate that God does come to us in many various ways. Perhaps we all can agree on that this morning that we celebrate the fact that God uses many means to speak to us and to move us. The scripture passage that I read to you a few moments ago from Isaiah 6 comes from Isaiah's call to ministry and perhaps the reason that it is included on this Trinity Sunday is it involves references to things that are Trinitarian in nature, particularly with the seraphs. A couple that come to mind immediately is that the seraphs uh, were comprised of six wings, three pairs of wings. With two of them, they hid their faces, and two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And then the conversation that they had to one another as they called out in praise and glory to God, they did not say, holy is the Lord, but they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Trinitarian in nature. As we read chapter 6 of Isaiah, we find that he has this vision in the temple as he is praying. And in his vision, he sees the Lord sitting on his throne, high and lofty. And he said that in his vision that the hem of the Lord's robe filled the entire temple where he was sitting. And then he saw these seraphs that were above the Lord on his throne with three pairs of wings, as I described earlier. And I imagine when, when Isaiah records this, it is more of a shout of declaration of praise when one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I'm reminded this morning that if I am vulnerable and willing and open to see it, that when I look around at all of God's grandeur and creation, that I can indeed testify to the fact that the whole earth is full of the glory of God. How many times have you observed creation and all of the things around you and you scratched your head in praise and glory and wonder. 
thinking the whole earth is representative of the goodness and the grandeur of the Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. It's in these times when I, I recognize this, I also come to God in repentance for the times when I did not recognize that even in the people and in the uh, places where I go, was I open and vulnerable to seeing God on the move, God at work. The reason that I think that this conversation that went on between these seraphs was more of a shout of praise is because when Isaiah records that as they said these words, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, that the pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called. And the whole house was filled with smoke. The mystery and grandeur of God. Could it be sometimes that we human beings are limited in our understanding of God that we miss the ways in which the grandeur and the majesty of God are revealed to us all around? The only way that we can respond when we, when we see such a representation of the divine is to become humble. We recognize God's uh, omnipotence and God's omniscience and God's omnipresence. And we were, and when we recognize the majesty of God, we find ourselves reduced in importance and in stature. as was the case with Isaiah because when he recognized the grandeur of God, he, he says, woe is me for I am lost. How many times have you and I recognized and admitted that when we stand before the perfection of God that we feel a sense of woe in our lostness knowing without God we are nothing. Not only did Isaiah recognize that he was lost, but he recognized that he was a man that possessed unclean lips and he lived among a people with unclean lips. It doesn't take us very long to recognize that when we listen to ourselves very carefully that we too are a people with unclean lips and we live among people with unclean lips. The words that we speak, the vocabulary that we choose. Woe is me, for I'm lost. I am a man or a woman of unclean lips and to live among a people with unclean lips. I think this is a great word in the day and age in which we live where we speak all negativity uh, to and about one another and we say unkind things and our vocabulary sometimes is unholy. Could it be that we resonate with this feeling of Isaiah when we stand before the perfection of the Trinitarian God and we know that we feel our sense of unworthiness? Woe is me, for I'm lost. I'm a person with unclean lips and I live among a people with unclean lips. But the good news is that Isaiah did not have to stay in this condition of feeling unworthy because God made him worthy. 
He records, yet even though I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isn't it marvelous that in our condition of lostness and our unclean speech that God allows us to see the divine all around us? It reminds me that we do so not because we deserve it, but it is out of the character and the grandeur of God that we are allowed to see the presence of the divine. And as Isaiah becomes repentant, he saw this vision of the seraphs flying to him holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar, representative of the place where one lays down one's burdens and cares and sinfulness. And the seraph in the vision took the coal and touched Isaiah's mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. I never want us to underestimate what transpired in that vision that Isaiah had in the temple because it was, it was two-dimensional. When we ask for forgiveness, sometimes we only see our uh, pardon as one-dimensional, that when we ask for forgiveness from God, that God forgives us and wipes that sin off of the slate, and we're given a new opportunity. But the power of this vision that Isaiah had in the temple was this, that not only was his sin forgiven by God, but the guilt had departed from him. I don't know about you, but there have been many times in my life when I have asked God for God's pardon and I felt that God erased the sin from my life, but the guilt, the guilt remained only there to conjure up memories to remind me of what I had done or haven't done. Could it be that this message from Isaiah's vision in the temple is there to remind us this morning that when we truly ask for God's repentance, God pardons our actual sin and God removes the guilt of our past mistakes and shortcomings. Many people are held captive because they cannot grab on to the fact that God has removed the guilt of their past. Perhaps this is a good reminder on the, on the Sunday when we celebrate the Holy Trinity that when we ask repentantly for God's forgiveness, that we recognize that God also removes the guilt that is attached to the sinful behavior. Isaiah was given a feeling of a clean slate. It was only when he had God remove the guilt and the, the sin from his life that he was able to hear the voice of God speaking to him directly. The reference here is that, that the reason that uh, human beings sometimes neglect to hear the voice of the divine in their hearts is because they are so burdened by the guilt of their past. They have, they're so consumed with what they have done or not done, that they cannot hear the voice of God speaking to them, calling them. It was when his guilt had departed and his sin was blotted out that Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord saying to him, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? 
We can pause here at this moment and we can list many things that the church has in ministry that, that uh, we send out a call all the time for people to, to serve. You can insert the clothing ministry or the Martin Elementary or the missions teams or on and on and on. If we listen very intently, we can hear the voice of God calling out to us. Here's, here's the need. Here's the ministry. Here are the people that need you. Do we hear the voice of God saying, whom shall I send to do this? And who will go for us? And Isaiah, ridden of the guilt and the sin in his life, was able to respond faithfully, faithfully with, Here I am, Lord. Send me. I want all of us to think about this morning of all the times when we have neglected to offer ourselves to, to the Lord's disposal. How many times we have come up with a list of ways of or means by which we cannot do something or to be in ministry in the name of the church of Jesus Christ. What were the times when you felt compelled by the Holy Spirit of God to answer, here I am, I am available, God. Send me. Don't wait for somebody else to, to do it or don't expect everyone else to do the work and while I idly sit on the sidelines. But to truly hear the voice of the Lord speaking resounding in the heart. Whom shall we send and who will go for us? That makes me want to jump with great joy in my heart when I hear the voice of God saying, whom shall send and who will go for us? I want to raise my hand and say, here, here I am, God. Here I am. Send me. I want to go. That person or persons need me. And I will go for us. I am thinking this morning of the celebration of the the doctrine of the Trinity where we acknowledge God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. For everything that we do in the church, we do in the name of the Trinity. And in fact, if you uh, are uh, untrusting or uh, cynical of my statement, that when we are baptized, as a Methodist Christian, we are baptized in the name of the Trinity, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And those are our marching orders. And when we are baptized in the Trinitarian uh, nature, we respond to ministry in the Trinitarian nature as well. Our guilt when we ask for forgiveness has been departed our sin is blotted out and we hear clearly the voice of the Lord speaking to our hearts whom shall I send and who will go for us here I am Lord here I am Lord send me I ask us all this morning what are the
of the ways in which we can become open and vulnerable to hearing the voice of God calling us to a particular ministry. What is standing in the way of our hearing or comprehending God's call upon us as the church of Jesus Christ? The inference here in the book of Isaiah is that we have allowed our sin and the guilt associated with it to help us to be deaf to the voice of the divine who calls us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to relive our baptismal vows, to be in ministry for God's church, and to volunteer with a servant's heart saying, here, here I am, Lord. Even if no one else is willing to go or to do, here I am, Lord. Send me. On this Trinitarian Sunday, will you join me in listening for the voice of God speaking to you and to me to be the church of Jesus Christ, and to volunteer with a servant's heart to say, here I am, God. Send me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit on Trinitarian Sunday. Amen. Let us respond to God's word this morning by standing and singing, Here I am, Lord.
we have been reminded that our Lord calls to us. We have also been reminded that God removed the sin and the guilt of our sin so that we can hear that call. We experience the Lord and the God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit go forth now in peace to serve our God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.